Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Bullish means up, 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 up. CNBC reports Kramer warns that too much speculative buying will crush this market rally. Well, we all know what to do when Jim Cramer suggests something, guys. Here is the latest CNBC's Jim Cramer on Tuesday explained the life cycle of a market rally and cautioned against buying too many speculative stocks. When the Fed meets tomorrow, he says, this is a quote, uh, if it doesn't show any signs of dovishness, if it dismisses the cooler inflation numbers like today's CPI, Consumer Price Index, you need to brace yourself for a sell-off, he says, uh, and at the epicenter of a decline will not be the solid stocks that deserve to go higher. It'll be the most speculative stocks that have already had huge runs. So this is what Jim Cramer is warning. Guys, this is what we are now seeing on the DJI, the Dow Jones. So I'm recording this pre-market, uh, and you guys can see this former high that we saw from back in uh, back in the summer, August 2023, we have now surpassed that. And uh, you know what? We've actually even now surpassed the all-time high for the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. We did see that high back in uh, January of 2022. Many people are noticing this considering, you know, the market has, uh, has not been, uh, well, has not seen steady gains since about 2022, early 2022. We did see that dip. There were some suggesting that uh, we were going to see that market crash akin to the Great Depression. Uh, and so this is the Dow Jones. We're seeing a similar move on the S&P. I had uh, put that marker up there too on the S&P 500. But as you guys can see, since then, we have actually moved past that level uh, and are not, uh, or we're approaching the all-time high on the S&P 500, have not hit that yet. So, you know, Kramer's saying here, if we don't see any sign of dovishness, going back over to the charts, uh, and let's just go back to the DJI. Click right down here. You guys can see the Dow Jones soars above 37,000 to close at record high on upbeat Fed message uh, and futures rise after the Fed's dovish position. So it is looking bullish, at least as of now. Let's bring up Bitcoin, guys, uh, because Bitcoin has seen quite a roller coaster ride, too. This is Bitcoin on the daily. Uh, throwing it on the hourly, you guys can see we are trying to recover. Bitcoin is trying to recover out of this slump. Uh, right now, we're, we're seeing a Bitcoin trading at about 43200 per BTC, uh, trying to get above this 43004 level. And, uh, you know, it's, well, I mean, it is moving. The rest of the crypto market uh, moving along with it. We can see XRP is also up uh, since yesterday. We got an XRP price right now trading at around 634. So uh, the rest of the crypto market moving alongside Bitcoin right now. However, greed is still uh, at 76 so it has tapered off a little bit, uh, but we are seeing more green. Bitcoin up in the last 24 hours, 5.4%. We've got Ethereum up 6.44. Uh, XRP is up 5.38. Solana is back up to 12.5% in the last 24 hours. So back up to $73. Uh, guys, it's an interesting time and a very important time to be paying attention. Now, some may remember past Decembers where we've seen something called the Santa rally, where we do see a bit of a rally around the holidays. Don't know if that is uh, going to repeat itself this December. So we got to keep poised and, uh, you know, just keep our thumbs on the pulse of the market. Uh, some other positive news with regards to crypto specifically. So, you know, we are actually in the midst of something really, really important here for crypto as a whole. And, uh, you know, the main focus on Bitcoin, particularly because this is the news we're getting, guys, from XRP Crypto Wolf. So the Financial Accounting Standards Board's new crypto accounting rules signal a brighter future for cryptocurrency in the corporate world. So guys, these are the new FASB rules that have been unveiled. A new accounting standards update aimed to streamlining the accounting and disclosure of certain crypto assets. So this is on the institutional level. Rewriting the crypto accounting playbook, the ASU mandates uh, that entities measure certain crypto assets at fair value, recognizing any changes in this value as part of their net income. Additionally, it requires uh, detailed disclosures about significant holdings, uh, contractual sale restrictions, and reporting period changes applicable to assets that are intangible, fungible, blockchain-based, cryptographically secured, and not issued by the reporting entity or its affiliates. The new rules will take effect for this fiscal year after December the 15th, 2024, with early adoption options being available. So guys, this is happening starting uh, a year from now, a year from tomorrow, December 15th, 2024. It sounds like it's far off. However, uh, you know, with this crypto bull run and the possibility that Bitcoin could in fact reach all time highs by December of 2024, I think what they're doing is they're planning this very strategically. Chad Steingraber here uh, also mentioning uh, this, this same story measured at fair value under the new FASB rule. So Bitcoin won't be a drag on balance sheets. This is a quote 
Welcome news for the 40-odd publicly traded companies holding $5.7 billion worth of Bitcoin. Uh, this as per BitcoinTreasuries.net. So Bitcoin won't just go down on balance sheets anymore. Uh, and so the ETF is ready. Will Clement also commenting on this. This is pretty big for corporate adoption of Bitcoin, guys. It means Bitcoin and crypto on your balance sheet is now classified as a financial asset instead of an intangible one. So this is a significant distinction now uh, with regards to crypto regulation. And because we've got the ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs kind of lined up, ready to go. Federal regulators now have to make that decision. Uh, you can now mark unrealized gains, whereas before gains couldn't be recognized until you sold. So uh, part of the new rules here, guys, I'm going to just read you some of this. The big difference is now their change in value. Both gains and losses will be reflected on the income statement if this is adopted. Uh, currently, only impairment losses are recognized. Essentially, they have to immediately book any losses and can't recognize gains or impairment reversals. This will add more variability to earnings, but also more accurately reflect the economics of holding crypto assets. So treating this more similarly uh, to traditional assets. Wanted to thank Will Clement uh, and Chad Steingraber, and of course, XRP Crypto Wolf for posting those. Now, we've also got this guy's from Marty Party Breaking. Central banks can hold up to 2% of their reserves in crypto starting on January 1st, 2025. Guys, it is sounding like we are finally finding our way into a cryptocurrency regulatory framework that is starting to make sense worldwide. Uh, and yeah, again, this is all global. This isn't just uh, with regards to the U.S. However, it is happening in conjunction with U.S. regulations. The Bank for International Settlements, okay, they are the ones uh, behind this. They say the standard will permit 2% of crypto reserves exposure among banks. The BIS says the global banking system's direct exposure to crypto remains relatively low, at least as of now. All central banks, including the U.S. Central Bank, are participants in the BIS. Uh, the Group of Central Bank Governors and Head of Supervision, or the GO, uh, GHOS, of the Bank for International Settlements has endorsed a global prudential standard for banks' exposure to crypto assets. In addition, the group has decided on January the 1st, 2025, as the implementation date for this new standard. So this is also uh, happening, okay? And Marty Party does uh, post the link here, Basel Regulatory Framework link with regards to the Federal Reserve Board uh, for Governors. All this to suggest, you know, we are going to see more money flowing into the King Crypto which means, guys, the rest of the cryptocurrency market will likely move along with Bitcoin. So the money going to flow into these Bitcoin ETFs once they are finally approved, and there are going to be so many of them. We know Fidelity, uh, Franklin Templeton, uh, BlackRock, of course, is the big one. And I think there's another big organization that are all uh, proposing their Bitcoin ETFs. I know th those are the th uh, three that come to mind. I think there's a fourth, but there are many others uh, like Kathy Ark's company or sorry, Kathy Wood, <laughs> her company, Ark Investments. So big money going to come into this space, guys. And it looks as though they're trying to coincide it with the bull run that is already occurring. So a bit of a retracement now. That is good. That is healthy. Hopefully we see this continue to retrace so we can get into our final positions. If you're interested to see what I'm trading this crypto bull run, you guys can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is a $5 a month subscription and I'm going to be posting my trades. If I do get into some last minute positions, I'm going to be posting those uh, within 10 minutes of me purchasing. Uh, I'm also going to be posting my selling targets, all the cryptos in my portfolio that I am trading, my legacy portfolio, the $10,000 plus portfolio that I have uh, created recently for this bull run. You can find all that at patreon.com slash working money channel uh, because you know this might be the one last time we can get in at these prices before we transition to this new regulatory framework for cryptos globally guys this is a global phenomenon here now crypto eddie posted this this is going to require some more research on my part i am in shock this is breaking news that also just kind of happened in the midst of all this polysign apparently is uh on auction notice of foreclosure so this is interesting because PolySign was that company that was founded by David Schwartz and Arthur Brito uh, to implement XRP adoption to the masses through derivatives trading, so on and so forth. So large volumes. However, guys, this is the latest. OK, what happened to those who bought the pre-IPO shares on Link2? Well, that's another question. Uh, you know, there's there's risks with everything here. PolySign is up for public auction notice and foreclosure of sale. This uh, reported by newsbtc.com. By virtue of defaults under that certain loan and securities agreement dated 
as of April 13, 2022, between PolySign and Boathouse Capital, pursuant to which the pledger granted a security interest in all of its rights, titled an interest to and under, among other things, the collateral described below to the agent. This sounds like the uh, the legal transcription here. It looks like somebody just cut and pasted the legal transcription here. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to read this. I don't think there's uh I, well, I mean, we, we get the gist of it, I think. I think, you know, a lot of people here are wondering, you know, is this, uh, you know, is this for real? Like, how how bad is this, really? Yassine Mubarak also commenting a statement from Link2. Okay, guys, so Link2 is that company that uh, is offering those or was offering those poly sign shares pre-IPO. Here's what Link2 said, uh, and I'm guessing Yassine Mubarak was an investor. Two days ago, PolySign CEO Jack McDonald reached out to inform us about the foreclosure action filed against PolySign by its lender Boathouse Capital. Since then, the PolySign team has been working diligently to resolve the situation in a constructive way. In the coming days, PolySign is hopeful it will be able to share more information regarding this resolution. In the meantime, PolySign is serving its customers in the crypto custody and funds administration businesses in a normal way without legal or financial impediments. So this is uh, the statement that Yassim Mubarak got with regards to PolySign, Mr. Intuitive saying, you know, how does this make you feel, Yassim? Nothing new for me, says Yassim Mubarak. I already knew what the statement said, but it might help others calm down a bit. My take, PolySign is not out of the woods yet. The outcome is still uncertain, but they are not going down without a fight. It is very strange. We had not heard too much about PolySign. Uh, but you know, I guess behind closed doors, it is a private company. I guess we don't, we, we didn't really know how well it was funded. And, uh, you know, link Two was, uh, well offering shares in this company. I don't know how that worked. I don't know if people uh, are going to get some kind of a compensation back if they do file for uh chapter 11 bankruptcy, if, uh, there could be like a class action creditor lawsuit or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not, I'm not going to bother with, I'm not involved in that. Uh, but for those of you guys who are involved in that, you probably want to uh, you know, pay close attention to these developments. So uh, some people just kind of speculating about this in this tweet thread. Uh, wanted to keep moving because uh, the Wrath of Kahneman also gives his two cents here. I think the PolySign auction may only be selling off subsidiaries, so not the main company itself registered in California. The assets to be sold are all elsewhere. Here's the relevant passage of the notice. So here is the legal notice. The issuers are direct and or indirect subsidiaries of the Pledger, a California company that is uh, in default on indebtedness extended by a lender. The equity interests of Pledger or Pledgegore uh, in, in each of the issuers and uh, the IP assets were pledged to secure the indebtedness and are being sold as part of the foreclosure process. So he goes on to say, here's a list of the non-California companies being foreclosed upon for lender debt. Uh, and so just retweeting out an earlier tweet of his, PolySign Cayman Limited, uh, PS International, Standard Custody and Trust Company, PolySign Capital, uh, Atomic Net, PolySign Acquisitions. So just, uh, I guess, some companies that were created under the PolySign umbrella. And so here's a list of also PolySign's SEC filings, and he gives all the supported links here, guys. The IP was pledged, says Crypto Eri. It will be sold as part of the foreclosure process, the master key escrow process, if true, this makes me sad. So it does look as if uh, there were, so the master keys, that is also being, I guess, auctioned off. Intellectual property assets pledged, including patents related to blockchain distributed ledger system and the master keys escrow process. Uh, and the uh, uh, IP assets were pledged to secure this indebtedness and being sold as part of the foreclosure process. So master keys escrow, as the Wrath Economist says, that hits hard. It does look as though PolySign is going under, guys. Julian Williams down here saying, if PolySign were in trouble, wouldn't Ripple step in and buy it? Uh, and Wrath Economist says, I'm not sure given uh, they recently just purchased Metaco. So, uh, you know, there's only so much money to go around, but, uh, you know, one would think that somebody would come in, swoop in and save PolySign. Maybe it was just fundamentally flawed from the beginning. Again, I don't know too much about this company. I did uh, a few videos about PolySign over the years. Uh, but we really uh, never got, uh, you know, too much information about the company other than the basics, the David Schwartz and Arthur Brito connection, uh, and the fact that they were creating a company to uh, basically leverage XRP at that institutional grade level. Uh, we do have the Metaco partnership now, so that may be uh, debased things a little bit or maybe replaced or displaced. Uh, you know, a, a potential partnership with PolySign and Ripple. It's okay, guys, not the end of the world, uh, but wanted to thank everybody involved here, the Wrath Economy, Yassine Mubarak, and of course, Sento Sumo Saba for her original tweet. Back to the Bitcoin story, because I don't want to be all doom and gloom today. Guys, I happen to see this. Fred Krueger 
No, 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 not this guy. This guy here, he's an investor in cryptocurrencies, a math PhD, a Bitcoin quasi-maxi, which means he's probably, well, fairly reasonable. He just gave his opinion on this podcast. Now, listen to this. I mean, considering we've been getting, uh, you know, this recent news about these new changes uh, for institutions that now can custody crypto and uh, how they can uh, report them on their books, the FASB rules, considering we're getting, uh, you know, more interest for the Bitcoin ETF. This is what Fred Krueger had to say about guess how much going to be moving into the crypto space into these bitcoin etfs specifically we're going to get into this listen to this courtesy of the iso goat here on twitter i think that the crypto world that that i'm now a part of um doesn't really understand the scale of these etfs uh and doesn't understand the kind of the, the, the wall of money that that potentially could be coming into bitcoin um and uh and just to give you a number uh you know, I, I asked a friend of mine who's in crypto, uh, who's pretty active, written, wrote a couple books on Bitcoin, he's pretty active in the uh, podcasting, Mark Jeffrey. I said, Mark, what would you estimate the size of the global ETF market? And he's like, I don't know, a trillion dollars. I said, what if I told you there's $10 trillion of ETFs? You know, so uh, that number is kind of crazy, right, if you think about it. And what's even more crazy is that number was 300 billion in 2000, right? So right around when I left Wall Street, it was 300 billion. So it's grown from 300 billion to 10 trillion. So this is not some sort of cycle, you know, theoretical, like what if the property market when became tokenized, what if people, this is like active ETFs that are trading today. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a $10 trillion market. And it's, you know, primarily in our jurisdiction, it's in the US, uh, you know, European jurisdiction. So this is not, you know, stocks that are trading in China or anything like that. This is, you know, ETFs run by, I think BlackRock itself has about $6 trillion in ETFs right now, uh, just to give you the scale of the market. So. I just don't think that people in the crypto world understand that there's, you know, ten trillion dollars of actual movable money, um, and the way that this money is 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 uh, kind of allocated is also very different from, you know, I would say the way that uh, crypto people think about buying and selling or DGENs think about uh, investing now. So it's really allocated in a very passive investing strategy. So first, I want to point out ten trillion dollars in movable money. That is significant. Uh, he used to work in Wall Street too. If you guys caught that clip, I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize that until the second time I listened to this. He was working on Wall Street uh, until the year two thousand, uh, and that's when he left. So we got the Bitcoin ETF ready to roll. Bitcoin ETF is like an IPO for a company. The ETF could ten x Bitcoin price. Another clip here from Fred Krueger, courtesy of ISO twenty o two two. Let's do it. Listen to this. My allocation on day one. This is like an IPO, right? So if you remember when. Uh, Marty, do you remember when the Google IPO happened in, in 2000? And it wasn't like a big, you know, you know, like watershed moment. It was those people just got in. They, they were well aware that Google was going to be an enormous player, but they didn't get in immediately, right? And, you know, then it sort of crept up. In fact, the Facebook IPO is another one, right? Facebook IPO actually went down right after the IPO, right? And then, then it kind of went up. So I think that, you know, this is going to be equivalent to those kind of things. I think it's going to, it's going to hit, but after it hits, you can expect that there's just going to be a steady wall of money that comes into this thing. And, and that's why I think a lot of the crypto people are not looking at this thing properly, because what they're looking at is they're looking at, great, does the existing crypto money, um, you know, try to trade this thing, try to front run it, try to sell the news, all this stuff. And that doesn't matter, right? Because really what's going to happen is over the next year, once people can access this ETF, and once this thing is now just one more bucket uh, in, this, in their choices, like, do I invest in S&P? Do I invest in real estate okay there's you can invest in the qr uh you can invest in uh, equity office uh you know do i invest in a uh energy etf okay do i invest in a bond etf right those are single decision points and you know with five or ten etfs you can you can pretty much cre create any portfolio now so i think over the next year this thing is going to make just an enormous difference because the amount of money that probably is going to come into this thing is i i think it could be 100 billion it could be 200 billion dollars in, in just a year uh, you know, and, and again, 100 billion out of a total of 10 trillion, 100 to 200 billion dollars in the coming year alone in 2024. Why do I say 2024? Well, I'll tell you in a second, guys, he continues on here and I'm going to play you guys this clip in a second. Guys, think of the implications this is going to have. OK, 100 billion dollars into Bitcoin, 100 to 200 billion of just the institutional money. He says, you know, the money that uh, retail crypto, the, the, the traditional crypto market that's not even going to matter because we are just going to see a wall of money come into this, flow into this. 
So the Bitcoin prices that we're seeing today, you know, $45,000, $50,000 per BTC, chump change, a drop in the bucket compared to what is going to happen next. Now, let me play you guys this second clip. Is I, I think it could be $100 billion, It could be $200 billion in, in just a year. Uh, you know, and, and again, $100 billion out of a total of $10 trillion in ETFs. Um, that's just on the ETF money that's just kind of currently in the ETFs. Now, there's all kinds of other add-on money that's going to come in that's not even in the ETF stuff, but that's just now going to come in because this thing has been legitimized. So, you know, what's the impact of $100 billion coming into Bitcoin? Uh, you know, well, I think we've seen what the impact of, you know, $10 billion coming into Bitcoin in 2021 is. What's the impact of $100 billion coming into Bitcoin? Uh, I think it could 10x Bitcoin. That's, that's kind of my gut feel. So, you know, uh, and, and roughly speaking, the rough math on these numbers is we kind of know that, uh, well, let's say it's at right now at 50,000. I'm just going to round it up to 50,000. 100 billion at 50,000 is 2 million Bitcoin, right? How are you going to get 2 million Bitcoin into an ETF when there's only 2 million Bitcoin trading on exchanges right now? You know, it, Michael Saylor is not selling his Bitcoin. Block One is not selling their Bitcoin. Satoshi is not selling his Bitcoin uh, or her Bitcoin. Um, you know, Draper is not selling his Bitcoin at 50,000. Um, so this Bitcoin, you're talking this very small supply of 2 million Bitcoin, and it's sort of almost an equivalent demand right there in that first year. The math is just very clear. This, the price has to go up to match the uh, to match the demand. It's just that simple, and it has nothing to do with, you know, the prior prices, the price. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just there's that much money that's going to come into this asset, and it's just going to force the price up. So I think it's I think it's a very very, I mean, it's an incredible bet. Only two million Bitcoin. We've got Michael Saylor not selling, Tim Draper, Satoshi definitely not selling. All the big guys not selling their Bitcoin. So. That is just going to push the price up. And what he was talking about too was those, uh, you know, those other incidental products or altcoins, for example. I mean, the blockchain industry, altcoins are also going to see a lot of this money moving in. Now, guys, again, we've got crypto visibility, XRP number five on the list. When people see this inflow of cash and they see Bitcoin go up, I mean, he is saying 10x, so a Bitcoin from 50000 to $500,000 per coin. You've got to think if that money is spread through the crypto market and more money comes in on top of the Bitcoin money, that is also going to pump alts by extreme amounts. And when is this all going to happen by? Likely approval Two months, next I month, mean, 45 days I think next month that. we'll get the approval. I mean, hopefully, right? Unless unless Gary Gensler's got some kind of, uh, you know, torpedo ready to kind of just blow us all up. But no, I, I think March, I mean, January 8th, you know, 29 days from today, I think January 8th is we're going to have the ETF approval, Jan 8th. And then you have 45 days until it starts trading after that. Correct? Well, we don't know. Do you know? I, I have not seen any definitive anything on that. That's what I've heard. I do not know for yeah, sure. Yeah, but some of these other ETFs have started trading in the week. Really? Yeah, like these Bitcoin futures ETFs. They've traded a week. <laughs> not even. Like they were announced on Friday, they started trading on Monday. Could be the case. But 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 that, look, on Jan, on Jan once they announce that thing, okay, man, the, that's when the, you know, the checkered flag starts and the races are going, right? That's it. So we are very close to the beginning of the, the you know, the Indy 500 here, you know, <laughs> we are very close. Gentlemen, start your engines. You know what I mean? Because that is like, is there going to be an ETF? Well, they just announced that there is going to be an ETF. So yeah, there is going to be an ETF. Okay. So Bitcoin's not a security? No, Bitcoin's not a security. Okay. So, uh, well, in the prospectus, it said that it still might be, yeah, well, they put that in to cover themselves, right? But we are a month away from that revelation. And then once that hits, these firms are just going to like, okay. What PR campaign do we, what, what's the ad campaign? Great, let's put a billboard out on Times Square. Can you see that? I, mean, I can just see it right now. Yeah. Larry Fake, Bitcoin ETF, full Times Square, you know. Multiple billboards on Times Square, you know. Uh, whole you're pages, gonna see whole pages of advertisements and barren. I mean, you're gonna turn CNBC on and it's gonna be, it'll be the Bitcoin ETF. They should change it to the Bitcoin ETF channel, okay? <laughs> So January 8th, as soon as January 8th, he sounded pretty confident about that too. And it could start trading within a few days or a week of that date. And you heard the analogy, the checker flag has gone. The race is on guys. The Indy 500 going to bring crypto prices up above, way above it sounds, all time highs. Bitcoin to $500,000 per coin. That would bring it past its full fib. What does that mean for coins like XRP and the others? Well, that is still yet to be determined. But I have a positive feeling about this. That's just my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.